it's time for one of my favorite things. That's right, chilling. After a long day of getting all my kid activities, soccer coaching, etc., etc., out of the way, that means I get to pour a big ass barrel aged beer down my neck and hopefully put my happy face on if it tastes awesome. So, from whom do we have said big ass barrel aged beer today? We have one from Boulevard Brewing Company and also in collaboration with Firestone Walker. That's right, and Boulevard, you know where they're from, out of Kansas City. Ah, Missouri, U.S. of A, yay, yay. And what beer do we have from them? And Firestone, we have their collaboration number six. Now, this is a blended ale. So I guess that would mean it's an American strong ale. It's a limited serving, it clocks in at 12.5% ABV and 22 IBUs. Now, this beer is a combination of, because you heard I said it was a blend, of Bourbon Barrel Quad from Boulevard, Sticky Monkey from Firestone Walker. So Bourbon Barrel Quad is 45%. Sticky Monkey is 35%. We got 10% Imperial Stout X with tart cherries. I think that came out like 2015, 2016. I had it. It was a nice beer. And 10% Velvet Merkin, which is an Imperial Oatmeal Stout that is Bourbon Barrel aged from Firestone Walker. So there you go, 100%. So. I have enjoyed all these beers from Boulevard Stage Right, other big bottle beer format. Put my happy face on. So let's get the cork off on this bad boy. Get the pop top top popped on it. Pop top. I need beer. See, I'm not speaking right. When I don't speak right, that means I need beer. So we're gonna take care of that problem. Boom. Got the cork off. Let's get it in the sniff top. Hell yes. Oh, tons of cannon smoke rolling off the top of that bottle. Mm mm mm. I've been drinking a decent amount of blended beers lately from. Uh, Clown Chews, Firestone Walker, and a couple few other breweries, and they've been really pretty fun. This, you know what, it could be awesome or it might not be, who knows. I would imagine if you have like tart cherry in there of that stout, that was that's a stout that had lactobacillus in it also to amp up the tartness a bit more. So it was like a big, wow, big <laughs> bourbon and like cherry wafting off the top of this beer while I'm talking, just blowing off the glass here. Anywho, um... I'm wondering if this is going to taste a little bit like maybe like a Stingo kind of, you know, that that kind of that kind of sort of tartness to it. But anyways, let's see what's up with the appearance of this beer. It's a really really dark garnet color. So you got two stouts in there, and you got two barley wines, and from what I can remember, um, what was it? Uh, Sticky Monkey was sort of like a dark brown color. Of course, Velvet Merkin and the and the Stout X, those are both black. And Bourbon Barrel Quad's got a real ruby color. This is a a really dark black ruby. It's kind of, I got a clear beam of light coming through it. It had a two finger head, but now we're down to a one finger head of super tightly packed, nice khaki looking bubbles. Wow. Really microscopic bubbles too. We're going to get great glass lacing on this, I can tell. And we got really tons of sheeting freaking alcohol curtains on this one, man. Look at that beer in the glass. Mm -mm -mm. This, this uh, Bourbon County uh, Stout, uh, Snifter here which displays the beer really nice. So, you know what? It's got to smell awesome, too, for us to taste it. So let's see what's up with the aroma. Mm, right up in front, that tart cherry hits you first. It doesn't smell like artificial. Tart cherry had a real nice, you know, actual tart cherry flavor. It didn't taste artificial or anything. The tart cherry stout. After that, I dig in. I'm getting some malt sweetness, some caramel. A lot of barrel char. As it opens up more, that bourbon is now coming up out of the, like, uh, I guess, bubble cap here. Mm, more and more bourbon, making my mouth water. Vanilla. You can smell the oak, the tannic notes coming from that wood. Char, a little bit of tobacco and leather in there. A lot of nice aromas of this. It it smells, in some ways, I've had a barrel-aged Stingo before, like I was surmising. It smells kind of like what I had in a barrel-aged Stingo, but that tart cherry is a bigger kick up and a, like a more fruity aroma. There's some raisins in there as well. Not a hint of alcohol. Smells pretty damn good. Let's dive in. Let's see if my supposition it could taste like a you know barrel aged. You sing out. I'm, uh, whatever. Let's drink. Cheers. Mmm, that's good. Mmm. The bourbon is way more apparent in the flavor, especially after that first sip. The first sip, you get a zip of that tart cherry. And after that, the bourbon comes in. And man, then there's a big rush of coffee after that from the two stouts that are in there. Mmm. This is a cool beer. Wow, let me take another taste of this. Wow, the booze is really well hidden for 12.5%. Mmm. Man, <laughs> this is a cool beer. There's a lot of layers of flavor to it. When you're drinking it down, like I said, first you get that zip of cherry, 
after that in the middle the bourbon starts coming in in the back end i'm getting this like melange of like coffee and char and almost like like earthy hop notes in some way and deep roast level but then it's foiled by a lot of caramel and everything that's in those quads um from what I can remember, Sticky Monkey had a lot of those big caramel and toffee notes and everything like that. It's been a while since I drank that beer. Um, I think I drank that other one I have. Anyway, uh, but man, mm. scarily well hidden, 12.5% ABV. The tartness of that cherry is a really nice foil to all the sweet beers that are put into the mix here. Because all the other ones are fairly sweet. Velvet Merkin's not a really, really super sweet beer, but... BBQ, Bourbon Barrel Quad, and Sticky Monkey are pretty high on the, on the sweet spectrum. And the dark notes of like the coffee and the chocolate that aren't so apparent in the nose, they kind of like come up in the taste. And that's kind of actually pretty cool because I was getting way more like cherry and everything and like less stouty type notes, more like bourbon, excuse me, more of the Bourbon Barrel Quad and Sticky Monkey notes just with that touch of the tart cherry in the nose, but in the taste itself, the stout's really coming through. And like I said, all that sweetness is being foiled by the taste of the bourbon, the spirit taste, and the cherry. So that's bringing the balance in, and that's pretty freaking cool. This is, this is a neat blend. Mm. That is an impressive offering. I've had many of these uh, collaborations. I haven't reviewed many of them. Some of them came out before I was really hardcore doing video reviews. I think I still got the one that they did with Pretty Things, who's sadly not in operation anymore, that was in Massachusetts. I think I still have that actual, that's actually, you know what, that's a Sting-O. This doesn't, this comes off a little bit like maybe, I don't know, I, I was thinking because of the tart cherry, it would have a Sting-O taste because of the quad that was in there, but the stout has really changed that. So it's not really like that, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a really hard beer to peg down stylistically besides saying it's an American strong ale with a lot of cool flavors that I thought may be schizophrenic because of what they had going on with that tart cherry and the stouts and the quads and the bourbons in there and everything but it's really balanced it out nicely and man it's a really cool blend mm. I also taste that this has cellaring potential um, beers you know, pretty, sell pretty well in 750 bottles the bigger format bottles sell well good oxidation rate and all that kind of stuff. But I, I taste potential for like more fruitiness, more like sweet fruitiness from the yeast esters over time that are left over in that beer to come out and shine maybe a little bit more. And what comes out in the oxidation of some of those cherry notes and things like that, to play, sweeter cherry notes to play against that tart, it might be a really cool beer. Anyways, so time to grade this beer. At time of recording, right beer has no grade. And Beer Advocate, they got no grade either. However, untap since they pulled the you know, trigger all these times and put their caps out there, we have, what, 4.25 caps from them at time of recording. Excuse me. So what am I going to grade this? I'm going to give this beer an A. I think it's a really well-made beer. I think I'm going to go 96. Um, it's not like blow me away A-plus level, like, you know, but it's a really super solid beer. I would drink it again for sure. No problem at all. Um, I might even grab an extra bottle of this for the cellar because I really do think it has cellar potential. It's tasty enough that I would buy another bottle. So you know what? I'm going to go 96. High A-level beer. Very well-made blend. Um, it's, it's impressive. So have you had our good friend collaboration number six? That's from Bourbon. Oh, bourbon. Wait, hold on. I, I, digr I was digressing. I needed a drink. You know have you had our friend collaboration number six from Boulevard Brewing Company and Firestone Walker? If you have, let me know what you know because I like the quid pro quo and the back and forth. I also think it's really kind of cool if you know that you think globally, drink locally, support the craft beer boom because that's pretty freaking awesome. It's also <laughs> damn nice if you rate, comment, subscribe, especially if this is your first time with us. And what you got to do? Oh, yeah. Smash that like button because that, along with only one bottle, Definitely at a 750 size of this 12.5% monster. Ah, that's all I need, baby, to put my happy face on. So to the next DJ Brew Tube, I got nothing but a big ass bunch of collaboration number six. Drinking love for you, and you know what's coming. Hell yes, a big pizza!